Mobile games get a really bad rap, and rightfully so in a majority of cases. They're often buggy messes that are riddled with predatory microtransactions and awful ads to even more garbage mobile games. And hey, how many times have you come across an ad for a mobile game on social media showcasing quote-unquote gameplay that couldn't be further from the end product? Too many to count, I bet. In that regard, it's totally understandable if the very thought of mobile games makes you nauseous. After all, you're an OG gamer that's invested hundreds, if not thousands of hours into the medium well before the advent of smartphones. Besides, what do mobile games offer you that PC or console games can't? Well, regardless of how you answer that question, mobile gaming is an inevitability in an increasingly mobile Mobile world. As it stands, there are 2.2 billion mobile gamers globally today. Looking forward, you can expect 72% of people to access the internet exclusively from their phones by 2025. So however you look at it, mobile games are here to stay and have formed an ever-increasing market that's absolutely loaded with potential. So much so that I believe that writing them off is a major misstep. Sure, you've got your soulless cash cows like Candy Crush and dead memes the likes of Angry Birds, but at the end of the day, Mobile gaming is just another, more casual way to game, and there are definitely some noteworthy titles on the platform that are worth trying out. And I'd like to show you a handful. So the first game I want to share with you is called Oddmar, and it's one that kept on popping up on the App Store for me, and I kept on ignoring it for reasons I can't quite remember anymore. This happened for about a year until I recently decided to take the plunge and commit to the asking price of 5 USD. And it's really interesting because mobile apps are interesting in the sense that we don't attribute much value to them, making the the more expensive ones seem like they're a little too pricey. But there's nothing too pricey about Oddmar. Nothing whatsoever. In fact, I would say that it's it's severely undervalued. This is a AAA platformer on your phone that's beautifully animated and voiced. Everything from the high energy Nordic score to the detailed environments is a clear indication of the love that was poured into this game, which was specifically designed for mobile devices. The game features zero in-app purchases and is quite possibly the closest you're going to get to a Rayman experience on your phone without it actually being Rayman. Just to give you a gist of what the game is about, you play as a fat orphaned Viking named Odmar who embarks on a quest to save his village and bring glory to his name. On his journey, you'll purchase new equipment, power through chase segments, make some nice friends, and utilize the power of shrooms. I mean, what's not to like? Just get this game. Or maybe a platformer on your phone really isn't your cup of tea, so perhaps you'd like something a little bit more zen, a little bit more thoughtful. If that's the case, then look no further than Mini Metro, an aesthetically pleasing game about building metro lines in a city of your choosing, be it Montreal, New York, or Hong Kong. And while Mini Metro is also available on PC, it truly shines on mobile devices, as that's pretty much where it was intended to be played at its core. In terms of difficulty, it can get pretty hard, especially when you gotta cart passengers from one end of the city to the other across multiple lines. As far as I know, there is no win state, but the game does end if one of your stations exceeds its capacity limit. The game also features daily challenges and offers a plethora of options to customize your experience. So hey, if you're looking for something to play and potentially get good at on your daily commute, a quiet moment in the park, or a lazy couch day, then seriously, mini metros for you. Then we have Duet, a game I wouldn't have even thought of picking up had a friend not gifted it to me. On face value, its minimalistic, shape-based aesthetic isn't all that appealing, but the gameplay and audio will grow on you immediately. Play this with headphones and thank me later. The game tasks you with something simple. You have to navigate a blue and red ball from one end of the level to the other while moving them around in a fixed circle. Holding the right side of the screen causes the balls to move in a clockwise rotation, whereas holding the left side causes the balls to move in a counterclockwise rotation. It's one of those games that's easy to learn but hard to master as the levels end up getting faster and faster as well as more complex. However, if pattern recognition is one of your strong suits, and let's be real here, most gamers are pretty good with that sh you'll get good in absolutely no time. The game also has an interesting and empowering narrative that is surprisingly self-aware. Oh, and one more thing, Duet does have paid DLC, but the base game has an endless mode along with daily and nightly challenges, so don't feel any pressure to pay any extra. Now, if roguelites are your thing, then I have the perfect light roguelite experience for you. Published by Devolver Digital, the company that everyone loves to love, Downwell, is a really simple classic shooter style game that has you jumping into a well with gun boots that fire with every press of the jump button. That's it really. 
As expected, the levels get harder and harder as you upgrade your character, and the game offers you a variety of themes to reward your progression. Simple game, fun, easy to pick up, perfect for mobile devices. The next game I've got for you is, is really under the radar. It's called Dark Echo, a minimal audio visual experience where you as the player are only identified as a pair of moving footsteps in a dark and foreboding world. In Dark Echo, you navigate the levels by holding your finger over in a certain direction tapping the screen every now and then to emit more noise as to see where the walls are and eventually where the exit is. The game starts off easy but gets challenging once it implements a creature that chases you as you make noise. Dark Echo is best played alone, in the dark, and with headphones. Next up, we've got Alto's Odyssey, and look, I understand that Endless Runners are a dime a dozen on mobile devices, but Alto's Odyssey is a gem among them. It's a beautiful game that has you snowboarding across deserts, oases, and ancient temples, allowing you to rack up a decent high score by grinding on vines, wall riding cliff sides, and flipping off of jumps in various high structures. Every now and then, it will also have something chase you, during which you have to maintain your speed by landing tricks, or else risk being thrown off your board. The game rewards you for getting good by providing you with unlocks including items and new characters which are triggered by completing challenges that include landing specific kinds of tricks, exploring new areas of the map, and essentially getting further and further. Much like Mini Metro or Duet, Alto's Odyssey can be a meditative experience providing you with soothing sounds and beautiful artwork that you can easily lose yourself in given the right moment. To top it all off, there are no microtransactions in this game. And then finally, we've got the Monument Valley games, uh, which are pretty much art that you can interact with that also happen to be pleasurable gaming experiences about wanderers on a journey of self-exploration and forgiveness. Throughout the games, you'll encounter environments that are made of optical illusions, which you can manipulate to direct the wanderers further along their journey. It's really just as simple as that. Some of the puzzles are a little tricky, but the game is designed to be completed so you won't get totally stumped. At the end of the day, Monument Valley is a memorable, aesthetically pleasing, casual experience that anyone can play, and I highly recommend getting both games and related DLC as they all tie together in a neat little package. And that's about it, folks. Uh, look, in making this list, I wanted to make sure that I covered a variety of games that would appeal to a wider demographic. I feel like there's at least one game here that will connect with you and what you look for in your more traditional gaming experiences. The games in this list are just that games. And although they aren't hardcore experiences, they are definitely capable of providing a significant amount of enjoyment while you're on the go, in your living room, or even on the toilet. Especially on the toilet. I mean, everybody knows that we get the best high scores when we're on the toilet. Now, there were some other games that I wanted to add to this list, but had to remove due to time constraints. So honorable mentions go out to A Dark Room, Plague Inc., Kingdom Rush, Hidden Folks, and a cute math game called Greg. Are there any games that weren't on this list that you feel deserve to be on this list? If so, let me know in the comments. I'd love to check them out. And hey, definitely let me know if you decided to pick up any one of the games I mentioned. As usual, I appreciate you watching this video. Feel free to leave a like, hit the sub button, and ding that bell icon so you stay notified every time I upload content. Of course, if you want to see me regularly and live, make sure to follow me on twitch.tv slash MrBuntyKing. It's the best way to hang out with me. Until next time, I love you. Bye.